So for this video, I will be showing you guys how to play Nintendo DS games on your PlayStation Classic. So I will be using AutoBeam for this video. When I'm on my computer, I will show you some more about it. But all you want to do is get your PlayStation Classic's USB, go and connect this to your computer, and I will show you guys what files you need to download and where you need to put them. Okay, so over on your computer, before I show you guys what files to download, I would recommend installing AutoBleam first. If you do not have AutoBleam installed, it's very simple to install. I have a tutorial for it on my channel. Um, this is the video, so you can search it, or I'll leave it in the description of this video, so you guys can just click on it and watch it. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend having this. It's probably the better operating system um, out of the ones that exist. So once you've got AutoBleam set up on your USB, you want to go to the second link in the description. This is where we can get a um, retro boot release. So what you want to do on this web page is just scroll down and we're looking for the AutoBleam version. So we need to get this. Download retro boot for AutoBleam version 0.9. It's a zip file. Just click on this link. Um, it's actually going to bring us to Google Drive and you guys just simply click on the download icon up here and this zip file will begin downloading. So once you've got that downloaded, you want to go to the next link in the description. This is where we can get the drastic launcher for retro boot. So scroll down. We're looking for the download set section here, click on this, and again it's going to open up a Google Drive link, and all we do is just click on this download icon right there, and um, it should just start downloading. I've actually already got this, so okay, so I could have cancelled it, but there you go. And then you want to go to the last link, this is the um, P sc underscore drastic 7 zip file we need to download this as well so simply just click on that download icon again and once you've downloaded everything um, after you've got auto room installed you should actually have three zip files in your downloads folder so what you want to do is get the first one pcs underscore drastic double click on this to open it up and you can simply just drag and drop this folder in your downloads folder now so things don't get complicated, we can delete this zip file once it's done. Next we need to go into the R9 patch folder, double click on this, and you just need to drag and drop this out as well. And then again, once that is dropped out, we can actually delete the patch folder or the patch zip file. And then last we've got Retro Boot for Auto Beam. I'll just recommend right click and just select Extract here. Okay, so now we should have all of these file folders. You can just delete the zip file. You can also delete the readme file. And the first thing you want to do is get this folder called PSC underscore drastic. This is going to go in the RB underscore patch folder, just like that. And now you should have four folders exactly like this. We're gonna find our Sony USB drive and we're just simply gonna drag and drop them on the root. Now we're just gonna wait for everything to copy across. It's 200 megabytes in total. So this could take some time. It says calculating right now. I'm just gonna say five minutes or something like that. So we're just going to wait for this to copy across and um, I'll be back when it's done. So if you already had RetroArch over on your USB, it might come up saying um, some files need to be replaced. You can just click on replace the file in the destination and it will replace them without any problems. And there you go, we have got all the files over on our Sony USB. Our USB is also in FAT32, but um, you shouldn't. it should be in that format if you followed the um, AutoBeam tutorial anyway. So there's one thing we're missing and that is some ROMs in our ROMs folder. So we need some Nintendo DS ROMs. Now it's entirely up to you where you decide to get your ROMs from I can't exactly tell you um, you can back them up of your Nintendo DS cartridges I believe I had a video on that on my channel somewhere but yeah I'm gonna find some ROMs and I'm gonna copy them across Okay, so here are the ROMs I've got. I've got Castlevania, Goosebumps Horrorlined, and Mario Kart DS. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show any Mario Kart DS footage in the video. Um, Nintendo like to block my videos, so I try not to show like their main games and stuff like that. But once you have got your DS ROMs, I'm just going to right click and copy. I'm going to go onto my Sony USB. I'm going to go inside of the ROMs folder, right click, new folder, and we're just going to call it, all capitals, just NDS. Obviously this stands for Nintendo DS, and we're just going to paste my ROMs in. In there so I'm just gonna go into it right click and paste and there you go that is how you add your ROMs um, Nintendo DS ROMs are kind of small in size as you can see um, 120 megabytes for free games isn't really anything so let's wait for these to copy across and then that is literally it for our computer we can now plug our USB back into our PlayStation Classic we can load it up and I'll show you how to play this Nintendo DS emulator okay so once we are back the first thing we need to do is just go and plug in our USB and now once our USB is plugged in, we can go and plug in the power cable. So now we're just waiting for the orange light to turn on. Just make sure your power cable is turned on at the wall. 
So there you go, there is the orange LED. We can now press it and we can actually go onto our PlayStation Classic and test out some of these Nintendo DS games. Okay guys, so make sure your controller is connected of course, and we're going to press square on our controller to load up RetroArch. So we're just going to wait for this to load up. If you get to this screen where it says updating, you're just going to wait. It says Retroboot will shut down when the updates are complete. Okay, so again, just press any button on your controller. Now we're just going to press square again to reload Retroarch. So this time the updates should be complete, so it should actually just load up like this. And if your Retroarch looks like this, you want to scroll down to where it says load content and press X on this. You then want to press X on um, a start directory. You then want to press X on NDS. I'm now going to select a game. So let's try the Castlevania Dawn of Sorrows game. Let's press X on this. And now we're going to choose the Drastic Launcher RB. And there you go, it's going to load up, sound will work and everything like that. And as you can see, we can move the controller and we can actually start a game. Now there are options you can change on this, but before we look at those, let me just get into a game first. Um, as you can see, cutscenes play and everything. It's actually really cool because um, these games look kind of quite nice on the TV. Considering how small the DS screen is, it's um, looking really cool. Okay, so I've just encountered a problem on this game. Um, the touch screen isn't very, I'd say, usable with this, isn't very useful. Um, you can actually use the touch screen. Um, you can plug in another controller. If I show you, if you press L2 to open up the options, so you can press circle to go into change options, and there's going to be loads of stuff in here. You can change the screen size and everything like that. Let me just show you like um, horizontal, or you can do single. Um, so if you select something, go back, and you just want to do, um, so you can save for all games, or you can save for this game. Let's just go and save for this game. Press circle. Then we're going to go down, and we're going to go return to game. It's actually going to put it like this, so you can change the um, like screen orientation. Press L2 again to go back to the settings. There's loads of different things you can do. Now if you go into controls and press circle on this, this down here is the touch screen. So as you can see, it's unmapped right now. I'd need to plug in something or somehow like map it to something um, to actually get it to work. And I don't actually have anything I can plug in right now um, that I can get it to work. So I'm going to have to try another game. What you can do is plug in a second controller and map it. Unfortunately, my USB is in there and I don't have an OTG adapter so I'm not able to do that just for now let's try and do a different game if I just go on um, exit let me just go on exit drastic let's load up another ROM I didn't realize that one had touchscreen features I think Mario Kart might be okay so we've gone load content um, NDS again maybe we can try goosebumps as well drastic emulator all of the games run fine um, the touchscreen is the only real issue. Let's give it a try of this game as, as well. If you're able to play games without actually needing the touchscreen, they're perfect. Um, most games do, because that's kind of like a main feature of the DS. Maybe we can try this anyway if we go on story mode. Press circle, maybe create a new file. We might be able to play Goosebumps actually, let's give it a try. And you can watch this uh, like 3D rendered cutscene, which is pretty cool. It looks really nice um, on the TV, actually. If you look at this on the DS, it looks so pixelated. On the TV, it's definitely upscaled, and it looks pretty cool. Maybe some of the characters will look a bit weird, um, but the gameplay is going to be fine. Okay, so this game we can actually play. As you can see, I can move around with the D-pad and the character can move around as well. So it really just depends at what games use touch screens. With most games, you can get away without using it. I know with some, you're going to have to use it. Just like Castlevania, it wanted me to input some custom signature. And um, yeah, I just couldn't do that for now. But that is how you configure it anyway. You press L2 and you can go into the change controls and you can actually do stuff. So we've got firmware, cheats, um, saves as well. Load new games. Game restart, game returns game, and that's pretty much it. Change options is definitely the best, um, so if you were to press circle. Let's try the other screen orientation. Let's try single. I'm pretty sure this will, um, to like full screen, the main screen. I don't know, it might do the top screen. It's interesting. Let's see actually what it does. So if we do save for this game, circle, and then let's do return to game. What is it actually going to do? Okay, so it's done the top screen. So most games, it would have your main screen as the top screen, I think. This game seems to be a bit weird. So we can press L2, we can go back. Let's just change that real quick. Um, so circle, let's do it on, oops, not that one. Um, horizontal, there you go. So let's see what else we've got. Screen swap. Um, oh, that could be interesting. We could try that, I guess. Single. 
Um, save for this game, return to game. Is that going to fix it? There you go, now it's full screen. Okay, so you can fix it pretty easily. And this looks completely fine to be fair. I don't even know what this is. Do you know, I haven't even played this game, I just loved Goosebumps when I was like a kid, so... Yeah, pretty mad. But um, we can also press L2 again. We've also got change options. Let's see what else is in here. So we've got mirror touchscreen. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all the settings. Some pretty good settings in there, I guess. And um, yeah, so let's just do um, exit without saving. And there you go. That is pretty much everything. That is the emulator. Very simple. These are all the settings. And that is what the gameplay is like. Very, very good gameplay. No real issues at all. As you can see, it's running how it would. Um, perfectly fine, just like on the DS. So yeah, with this game, Goosebumps Horrorland, this is completely fine. This is perfectly playable. Um, there's no like issues. And I haven't even had to use the touchscreen yet. So I'm able to play this without any problems. And basically just use the controls. So yeah, I'm literally playing... What is this? This is like Big Thunder Mountain at Disneyland Paris or something, I don't know. Looks like they've copied that. So that is pretty much it for this video. That is how you set up the Drastic Emulator. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.